What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down some of the Tesla spy and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's going on with the economic calendar moving forward, what you should be watching for as time progresses, and also some very, very important warnings for tomorrow. But before I break the devil's information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks and offerings very soon in just about a week. Anyways, for Tesla, we had this large head and shoulders like structure that played out very nicely, and Tesla dropped all the way down to 168 after breaking the support at 173. So we had this range Tesla was in for the past month, and finally, Tesla got the break we were waiting for. Now, because we broke this, Tesla made a big move to the downside, but we're still trying to base at this 168 support. This is the exact level we called out if we ended up losing uh, 173. So now Tesla is kind of shuffling between 169 and 170. The question is, what's going to happen moving forward? I want to talk about that real quick. So there's been a lot of talk about Elon Musk's pay package. Uh, many you know, opinions out there from these headlines are saying that uh, that's the reason for Elon Musk's decline. There are all these different theories and headlines coming out about it. Let me just make it very clear. These companies know that this is very, very hot for Tesla. So they're trying to come up with all these articles, all these different perspectives just to get as many clicks and views as possible, in my personal opinion. And I personally think that uh, I, don't, I noticed that the majority of headlines I'm seeing are actually against Musk's pay package uh, in the client inclining um you know shareholders just vote against it you know there's they're criticizing musk calling him a billionaire this and that but honestly guys you guys know my opinion on this it is still more advantageous for tesla to vote yes just to get it out of the way instead of having to risk uh you know spending 22 to 25 billion dollars on another one so that just makes a lot more sense to me but i'm still seeing a lot of headlines about this about how musk is very distractive his decline is because of the pay package this and that and the headlines will continue to say this i don't really think it changes my opinion much but once again, I just want to be very honest about what many people may think. And many different uh, news articles are still coming up with opinions that still urge people against Musk's pay package as it's very, very inconsequence inconsequential, at least in the eyes of these different people. But I'm not going to focus too much on that. I just want to focus on what's happening with the markets moving forward. And you guys know my opinion. I do support Musk's pay package. I think we should just vote yes and get it out of the way. But what's happening with the markets? That's the bigger question. The pay package situation for Musk, the shareholder meeting is going to become more prevalent on Thursday. That's when we officially have the announcements coming out. But for tomorrow, it's going to be Wednesday. And I just want to give you guys a warning about CPI. One hour before the market opens, we have CPI data coming out month over month and year over year. As of right now, the market's actually kind of pushing a bit, approaching a CPI. And we did call the set that the market was trying to bounce. But the problem is we don't know what the numbers are going to be like. So we will see if we get hot numbers or not. There was a risk for core being a little bit hot from what I'm seeing in projections and also based off previous data we got from the ISM services data. That was a little bit earlier, like last week. So with the risks to core being a little hot, is it enough to really cause the market to dump? I'm not 100% sure. Other than that, though, I do th think that the majority of CPI data will be aligned with expectations and fine. I'm just not as confident about core. So all this data comes out one hour before the market opens. If you want to hold your positions, if you're holding Tesla calls or puts, if you're holding you know, calls or puts through uh, for SPY or anything like that, if you're holding any like long positions on futures, whatever you're doing, just be careful because when we open tomorrow, okay, when we open, the market's going to make a big gap up or gap down depending on what CPI looks like. And then that's also going to affect the FOMC meeting, which will affect the rest of the day. So we will see what the numbers look like and how they end up affecting the markets. That's going to be pivotal for how we end up moving. But with that being said, uh, with the big data coming out, just heed my warning in case you're holding anything overnight. For Tesla, we're currently stuck between 170's resistance and 168 as support. If we get a big bullish move after CPI, Tesla could bounce and try to push back up to at least 173 and 176. If we get a very, very bearish move and Tesla gets a rug pull alongside the whole markets, there is a risk of Tesla dipping lower because of a hot CPI. Why does CPI affect Tesla? Well, first off, inflation does affect the cars industry big time. Because not only does it affect the sector, but also it affects the Fed's policies. If, <coughs> excuse me. If the Fed is forced to be more hawkish and to be more hawkish for longer, keeping rates higher for longer, that's going to affect uh, interest rates and also those loans. So it's going to have a big effect on leases and all sorts of other things that affects Tesla. So that's what the most important thing worth noting. So 
with that being said, guys, uh, right now Tesla's range bound. Uh, if we get a big move tomorrow, we'll be looking for either a break of 170 to push up back up to the range of 173 to 176. If we get a rug pull, 165 could be coming, if not 162. So we'll just have to wait and see. If you're holding overnight, it's your choice, but just know that there are some risks involved in that move. For SPY, we are completely range bound right now. We have 536 as our resistance and we have 533 as our key support. We've been going back and forth, but we just got this little dip before a big pump. We called a drop in a pump yesterday and that's what happened exactly. Now we're just shuffling around 536. That's where the all time high is. Spy is near all time highs. The question is, are we about to get a big rug pull thanks to CPI or are we about to break out? If we break out, we could be approaching and getting very close to 540. If we get a rug pull, we could be making our way back down to 530. We will have to wait and see just to be safe. But just know that a big move is coming for NVIDIA. We're holding it very well. We could be pushing all the way up to about 125 all over again for NVIDIA, or we could be looking for a move all the way back down towards 117 or below that. I will wait and see. We're kind of stuck in the middle. There's not really much of a direction yet. So we just have to wait. One red flag about the markets is the fact that Bitcoin did dump quite a bit. It's actually down almost 3.5% right now. So Bitcoin's dumping a bit. We had a nice head and shoulders, also a double top like structure. And this does suggest downside is still more possible for Bitcoin looking at technicals. So just be careful with this, guys. Uh, we'll see how this ends up affecting the markets. The markets are still near all time highs, despite the fact that this is happening. For the QQQ, this is also contracting. We're actually looking at new all time highs in the QQQ, approaching resistance around 467. Uh, I had marked 467.8 as the next level. That's close to where we ended up going to. Uh, if we break down, watch 466 is support and 468 is our resistance. So if the QQQ gets a hot CPI alongside the markets, we could get a rug pull all the way back down to the 462 area or even below that. If we get a good CPI, we could be pushing up towards 470 and it's going to be led by NVIDIA and Apple. We will wait and see how things go. But just keep this in your mind, guys, to be very careful. As of right now, the chart looks very bullish. Same thing with Apple. Apple's breaking out very nicely. We've even broken through this 204 support. Our next target is currently 206. So overall, Apple is continuing to show life. Whether this continues or not, though, depends on what we get from CPI. So we will just have to wait and see. Do we pump all the way up towards 210 or do we get a rug pull all the way back down to 200? We will wait and see. For a few more, we also have... The IWM Russell 2000 trying to rebound a bit. We're testing 200. If we do close above this and we get a nice pump, we could be going back up to 204. If we get a rug pull, we could be on our way back down to about 196. Overall, we're actually showing life on the uh, IWM, so we'll see how things go. For Coinbase, we got a nice little pump. We're still kind of down a bit. We're trying to hold above 240. If we hold this, we're going to be looking pretty good. Technically speaking, we have this gap to fill. So maybe CPI helps this pump a little bit. But at the same time, it's not a guarantee. Technicals are not everything. So we'll just have to wait and see. Same thing with Amazon. We're kind of stuck right now in the middle, kind of contracting a bit. Uh, will we see a nice rally up to 190? Do we get rug pull back down to 182? We'll have to see based off CPI. Same thing for Meta. You know, it's looking very bullish, technically speaking. It looks like it wants to go up to about uh, the next resistance zone all the way up here around 510. So could we continue to 510 or do we get a rug pull? We'll see. So far, technicals look very bullish on meta. Uh, and then the last two I'll talk about are AMC and GameStop. GameStop is trying to balance. I did say that it might rebound a bit, but we have to try to break past 29.36 to really start pushing. We have pushed a bit, but we haven't broken some key resistance yet. So we just have to wait and see if we break past 29.38 and yes it'll be a much bigger push we have this imbalance to fill as well so we'll just see if that ends up being the case for amc we're also trying to push a little higher we have this imbalance to fill up here around 5.65 so we'll see if this continues to pump overall it's showing some life so we'll see how things go from here uh, but with that being said guys uh i hope you guys really appreciate this video uh, that is it for now get ready for cpi tomorrow morning before the market opens if you're holding any options overnight it's up to you uh, if you're playing futures or something uh, you will have opportunity to exit before the market opens so that's going to be a lot easier especially because you don't have data decay but it's your choice guys whatever you want to do uh, i'm just giving you guys the warning for now and that being said for tesla we're showing some weakness relative to the, to the markets tesla did dip a bit but what's good about Tesla is we're actually trying to base at 168. So let's hope for the best for Tesla. Let's see if we get a bounce tomorrow or not. And let's see how things end up going. All right. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys very soon in the next one. Thank you and peace out.